We don't want to make people wait. Oh, you were waiting for the timer? You thought, oh, the timer is going to expire. Well, guess what? It's not going to expire. I always hate that timer and it's especially nerve-wracking when I'm here with a guest and we're both just staring at each other in Zoom and the timer is just ticking and it's like fucking... Ugh, makes me so nervous. So that's why I ended it early. Uh, welcome to another stream. Um, today I'm here with Brandon Bayer, the creator of Blitz.js. It's not our first time on stream. Uh, we're going to discuss the new features of Blitz.js and a bunch of other things. But first, welcome, Brandon. How's it going, buddy? It's going good. Thanks for having me. It's good different, to be here. Different location this time. We didn't do any small talk before the stream. We were just literally staring uh, at each other for 15 minutes while I was doing the setup. So how's it going? Uh, going great. Did they finally evacuate just, you from, where, where were you in some exotic location? I was in Thailand uh, for five months and I just got back to the States. So I came back to visit family. Okay. It's a bit different here. Korean over uh, there up, is like pretty non-existent, but here it's different. like very existent. Do you, do you regret going, but you cannot go back now, right? That's it. You made your move. Right. And that's yeah. It. Yeah. All right. Oh fuck. I don't know. Um, so how's it going? What What have you been working on? Except Blitz.js. Do you work on anything else before we go into Blitz.js? How does your workday look like? I have no fucking idea. So I usually do about twenty to twenty-five hours of consulting work per oh, week. Okay. Um. So I usually do that Monday through Friday, like first half of the day. Mm -hmm. Um. And so I've been working for a startup, and that's. That contract is ending in two weeks and then i have about two to three months of contract work lined up to build blitz apps for clients so pretty oh, excited about that cool have you used blitz so far we said we're not going to talk uh, Blitz. immediately we're going to blitz have you used <laughs> it for a client <laughs> no not yet not yet not but yet. uh starting in like three weeks all right um welcome everyone to the welcome everyone to the stream whether you're watching on periscope youtube twitch whatever you're watching i'm gonna please ask you if you want to keep watching the streams i have another guest stream next wednesday with um sigun who created chakra ui super excited for that one if you want to keep watching the streams i would please ask you to transfer to twitch.tv slash dikice because eventually i'm gonna stop streaming on youtube periscope and so on i just wanted to mention that thank you for the follow whoever followed um, do you want to get like right in? Because I think we have a lot of things to talk about and yeah. I have a lot of questions and let's see, let's see what happened just to inform people who are joining the stream for the first time. So previously when Blitz was created, when was Blitz created? Five months ago, I guess. No, five, six months ago, something yeah, like that. Five, right? six months ago when I started on it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I saw it and I got super excited because you know me, I'm obsessed with doing less and getting more and writing less code and doing more shit. And I love higher level things. I don't want to go low level and just write, um, oh bro, we have to write raw SQL, fuck all of that. The higher the level, the better for me. And that's why ideas like Blitz.js excite me and I wanted to get Brandon on the stream to discuss it. And we saw an early preview, we saw an early version of Blitz back then. And we said, uh, because we didn't answer all of the questions, which if you have, put them in the chat. I'm going to pick some of the questions and we're going to discuss them with Brandon if you have some questions. Um, but yeah, we had a lot of questions. We didn't manage to answer everything that you had. And we managed to see only a couple of features from Blitz. And we agreed with Brandon, we're going to set up another stream whenever Blitz has authentication and more serious features and we can finally use it for building serious apps and the stream was supposed to happen on july 8th i remember because i i had other people other guests who were interested in doing this and i was like nah i'm doing a stream with brandon on blitz yes one day before the stream brandon cancels the event next week someone is like hey can we talk about it? and i'm like nah i'm doing it with brandon next week brandon cancels the event so he canceled like four or five events in a row because I guess you were polishing the API. <laughs> it was twice. It was it, only twice. No, it was at least five, five, five times. Wh when was the last time I was exaggerating about something? It was at least five times. No, it was two times, but uh, I get it. Why? Because you were trying to polish the API and you were trying to show everyone um, how Not poli just polish it, but get the auth actually shipped out. So yeah, I just yeah, published yeah. The, uh, like the full version this past weekend. So. Yeah, I saw, uh, I'm getting notifications whenever you pass new, whatever you publish new versions. So I saw the notification and I was like, oh, finally we're gonna have the stream. So now the spotlight is on you, I guess. I'm gonna go to the Blitz Dogs and first we're gonna, we're just gonna get an overview of um, of what's going on. We're gonna try to write some code. I don't know how far we'll get, but let's get, let's get it started. I'm gonna jump back to my screen. 
hopefully me and Brandon are not gonna take a big portion of the screen. We already created the project behind the scenes. It's just a blitz command, like blitz new, whatever. And then you change it there, but we still haven't started it. Uh, we deleted the old project. If you were watching the old stream, that thing doesn't exist. So we're gonna go um, here in CZ and just let me create blitz demo two. Of course, we're gonna pick an emoji because it's well, whatever emoji we're gonna, yeah, let's pick this one. We're gonna put it in live streams. We're gonna put it in full mode and the link, I guess is gonna be localhost 3000. We're gonna choose the folder in the blade stream two. And I can open my editor. We are gonna go here to Blitzstream to Blitz Demo 2, open it in the editor, and we're gonna run it from there. We still don't have the option to run the projects from CZ, and it's pissing me off, but we're gonna get there one day. It would be ideal if CZ can actually run the project. It can just open it in the editor, and that's it. Uh, but I'm gonna run it from here. So I'm gonna go Blitz Start. We're gonna let the project run. I'm gonna switch to uh, Blitz Demo 2, and we're gonna go to Localhost 3000. We're gonna wait for this thing to run. Uh, ready to launch, let's refresh, we're gonna get our Blitz app, and eventually we should get it started, server localhost 3000, building, compiling, blah blah blah. If you're not familiar, just a short intro, Brandon, because we probably have a lot of people who don't know what, what it is and how it works, blah blah blah, just give them the shortest intro on what is it built on top of, and the underlying stack, and why did you do this thing, but try to keep it as short as possible because we want to jump into part two. Yeah. Let's go, let's do it. Okay, so... Blitz is built on top of Next.js. So if you know Next.js, you already know Blitz for the most part. And the Blitz adds a bunch of stuff, but the single biggest thing it adds is the new Zero API data layer, which allows you to write functions that run on the server and then import those directly into React components and like just a direct function import and use it without worrying about API call, the data fetching or all of that stuff. And then at compile time, that direct function import is swapped out with an API call. So it's super fast for development because you don't have to, um, you know, mess with all of the API stuff. You don't have to worry about GraphQL or REST or, or none of it. And then, so it also adds different like CLI tools and some conventions and things more like Ruby on Rails or Laravel, um, just things that help you build like a full stack application. Um... I love that. I love the idea of it. Every time I do something complex with an API, because like um, usually when I'm when I'm doing web dev nowadays is the the admin stuff for CZ, which consists usually of Next.js and a bunch of um, GraphQL, Prisma, and stuff on the back end. So when I do something, when I describe it, what do I want to do? It sounds very simple. When I start doing it from the front end to the back end. It's like, Jesus fucking Christ, why so much boilerplate? Even GraphQL, like I love GraphQL. Um, it makes things kind of easier, but you would have to repeat the same fucking thing all over, like from one side to the other side. And you would just want to do one simple update or whatever it is. And Blitz removes that. And every time I've been doing it, I'm like, God damn it, the future is going to be so nice if I generate a new project with Blitz. And that layer is removed. But the first question I want to dive into before we actually go to the new features, I actually emailed you about this because that thought has been bugging me. I have a couple of projects in mind that I want to start. And one of them actually needs to have a mobile app. Let me just switch because we're not uh, showing the screen. Um, one of them has, a, has to have a native mobile app planned for it. And eventually consume the API from Alexa and Google Home and whatever else. The thing is, are you planning to solve that? Because just to explain, Blitz doesn't expose any API out of the box, right? You can just do stuff basically, but it doesn't expose any GraphQL endpoint or REST endpoint. Um, well, it does, but you don't have to build it yourself. So it does all of your, the functions that you define on the server are all exposed at a unique API endpoint that you can use from anywhere. Um, so okay. like as of today, right now, you can use uh, the generated API, um, the like the, the the part that is maybe not as straightforward is the authentication part. Mm -hmm. So I actually have uh, one of the people who has a production Blitz app right now. He is working on a new project, and it's going to use a mobile app. And so he's working on setting up either like a cookie-based authentication with a mobile app or token authentication. So you can do either one of those. So it's just That's a matter really of like cool. figuring out exactly. The happy path to do that but it's totally possible well that solves it I, i'm gonna use blitz for everything else forever because it's 
I don't know, it seems like the ideal solution. I've been trying to nitpick at it and think what it could fail at. But if you're planning to generate, you also men mentioned like generation of React Native libraries and stuff, right? Yeah, that's that's still a little bit uh, a ways out. Um, probably like maybe six months or something. But yeah, we want to either have like the first class integration with React Native where you can import the functions directly into your React Native code. And then we automatically do that same thing like we do on the web. Or the alternative is to run a command to generate like a full client library mm -hmm. that is already like fully typed with TypeScript for all That's your awesome. API yeah. endpoints. That's, yeah, I love how Prisma is doing that when you generate the Prisma client. If I could generate the Blitz client and use it in React Native or whatever, that's fucking epic. Yeah. That solves everything. Yeah. Even easier than using an API. <laughs> yep. So, just to conclude, there's nothing GraphQL-y about Blitz, right? There's no Correct. GraphQL layer, nothing. Correct. Because a lot of people connect Prisma. When they're going to see Prisma, you might think, oh, that has something to do with GraphQL. But Blitz is using Prisma, and now the new Prisma version is not doing anything with GraphQL anymore. Right. So. And then we have Blitz queries and mutations. They're called queries and mutations, but they're not GraphQL queries and mutations. They're just normal, like, read and writes. Read and writes. That's awesome. That's awesome. All right. That was that was the only thing that basically I had to ask. Um, welcome to, to the new people who just joined the stream. If you have any questions, something that's bugging you, but regarding what we're doing with Blitz right now, not the basics, because you can read about the basics uh, or what, whatever you have. I'm going to pick some questions. And I'm going to ask Brandon in the during the stream. Um, let's um, I would love to look at the new stuff. So you mentioned that that's why we generated a new project. And you mentioned that in the new project, a lot of things are a little bit different, right? I'm gonna keep this open um, just so you don't cover. Basically, just more. So, okay. Uh, um, Can you tell me the, where to navigate and what is new? Um, at the very top level slash app component, we have um, under pages. Oh, um, under pages. Yeah. 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 Underscore app. Yeah. Yeah. So we have React error boundary installed here with like a top level error boundary. So you already have. Oh, wait um, a second, wait a like second, a wait a second. Setup. So when I generated this app, I already get the authentication out of, out of the box. Yeah. It's not something that I add later. Yeah. So, oh, that's cool. so for okay. everyone watching, this is on Canary, if you install Blitz at Canary. Mm -hmm. um, so I just published this yesterday. It has, it's installed by default, um, but yeah. Okay, so this you is can, Blitz, Right now Blitz with Canary. your new app, you can sign up and log in and log oh, out. Oh shit, I just noticed this. I just noticed this. Uh, that we have sign up and login. Previously, we didn't have that. So let's go and sign up. Let's see what's going to happen. Email Brandon. At, hopefully, it's not going to send a real email, right? Uh, no, it won't. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, password, I love unicorns. Okay, Brandon at gmail.com. I love unicorns. Congrats, you, your app is ready, including user sign up and login, log out. I love this. I, f I, I cannot even express how much I fucking love this because authentication in 2020 should be literally, well, I don't know how many lines of boilerplate are there. We're going to see that now, but I'm so tired. Anytime I need to implement authentication, I'm like, why is this like this in 2020? Does this support login with Google, exactly. Facebook, Passport and shit like that? Does it have? Yeah, yeah, yeah you can. Uh, so we have it has a built-in passport JS adapter, so you can use awesome. any passport strategy. Yeah. Awesome. Are you using anything for authentication under the hood, or did you build your own solution? Um, we built our own session management package. So the CTO of Super Tokens, which is a like an authentication startup, uh -huh. um, they they led the implementation, kind of the design implementation of this. But I built awesome. it all. I love how I put people's chat on top of random things. So let me just put it here in the empty spot. So your chat is going to go over here. Um, Limit logins how, yeah. to a specific domain. Um, let's leave, as I said, let's leave the questions. I'm going to pick some questions. We're not going to answer right. everything. Let's just dive into the basics first. And you uh, can use Okta. We already have somebody using Okta with the passport adapter. Um, why haven't you, I just figured this thing out. I don't know if it's, um, I, I just found out about this. Did you consider using this or it was not possible with the setup? That, Cause this we was a support for It came Prisma. out like after we were mostly done. Um, this is recent, and, this is new? Yeah. Next out? Well, mm -hmm. at least, at least when I found out about it. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. Uh -huh. But yeah, it's, it's just. It's different, like that's for a vanilla next app. Yeah. But what we have is ideal for a Blitz app because it's, okay. it's a lot more integrated and has better features. 
Okay. For plots. Um, okay, before we go to the docs and stuff, let's just see what did this generate and what is different from last time. So in the root app, you have... So there's the auth. Yeah, you have this basic stuff, um, but then most of it's in the auth folder. Did you decide on a form library for Blitz? What what did you do for um, a form? So currently what's on Canary, it installs React Final Form. Wait, just that's, a second. That's a TypeScript. What in the gods, what it's in the script. fucking GSX, DSX is going on here? That's it's a TypeScript. valid syntax? Fuck it, I quit web development. Thank you very much. Thank you for watching the stream. Thank you for being a guest, Brandon. I'm leaving web de If this is official syntax, I'm out. See ya. Bye, everybody. Thank you. What the fuck is this? I just feel sorry. sorry. <laughs> I mean, I know what it does, but I never knew it yeah. was a Jesus fucking. Okay. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so what what's in here right now is React Final Form, um, but we're adding we're we'll add a prompt so you select between uh, react final form react hook form and formic so what did you decide on at the end um you get to choose oh you get to choose okay yeah. wait but if i go to form what is right what now is... you right now on the late on the canary release you do not get to choose but you oh, will okay so it's react final form here uh what is zod zod is uh a better yup what is yup? Yup for dump. Uh, schema what validation. Oh uh, yeah, I know. Yeah, yep. I remember. Yeah, yeah. Zod yeah so Zod is, is, is really nice API and it works really good with TypeScript. How ironic is that every Saturday I'm doing a show called This Week in Web Development and I don't know what is new in web development. Maybe you should be my co-host and tell me about Zod and Yup and Brup and Burp and whatever people come up with. Anyway, so you just generate the form but people are free to use whatever form library they want with this, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we have we have to have something in there since you we yeah. have auth by default. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So on submit we have await login and where's login coming from? From op app, app auth mute. Cannot even speak. Yeah. App so the, auth mutations login. Cool. That whole um, yeah auth folder is like all mm -hmm. of the auth code. So again, these are not GraphQL mutations. If you're just joining the stream or if you haven't seen Blitz before, these are not GraphQL mutations. They're just doing stuff with Prisma right or actually are you doing something like on login nothing is going on with prisma okay. you're just getting the so session let's let's walk through this so that first line let's just go cons, to the sign up first i think that makes sense first thing is a sign okay up. sure okay so the first line in here is the constant email password sign up input dot parse so okay. sign up input is a zod schema and when you call parse on the input that ensures that it that there's an email and password there ensures the password is a minimum length of 10 or whatever is defined in your validations file. Okay, so in the, let's see the validations file. This is coming from Zod, sign up input, string email, string min. Aha, uh -huh. so it's a very nice way to define your rules and shit. Right. Okay, I like that. Login input, cool. So then so put... back here, when you call parse, that ensures that it, it matches that uh -huh. and it throws an error if it if it doesn't. That so that's sense. your your kind of security for this. Okay. And then it also fully types email and password, so you're guaranteed that email and password exist after that point. Mm -hmm, so your TypeScript mm -hmm. types are correct. Okay. So then the first thing is hash the password, and that's a, a helper function from app auth yeah. slash index. Are you considering making these things, like, I get it that you get them in Blitz new, but why don't you hide them under the, the hood? Why would the we user could, need, but, need to mess um, with this? Invariably, you're going to need some configuration options, some overrides, some, like, because it's authentication is business logic, and so every app is is going to have some different requirements. Um, that, that and like an epic example, because of most this. of the apps are using email password for authentication. How would my hash password would be different from the other person's startup hash password? It would be the same shit. Yeah, yeah. So okay, so um, from a like philosophical point of view or whatever, uh, Rails has a very popular library called Device. Okay. Um, and it's it's authentication, session management, library, and it does everything you can imagine, but it's impossibly hard to understand, extremely hard to customize, and it's like, it's it does way too much stuff. Mm -hmm. And so like that's the path that you're going towards if you want to, um, like make everything just like a one line thing. Yeah. Um, I see so, that, yeah, I would love for things to be customizable for the 1% of people who would want to customize them, but also you would have to think that most developers who would actually build something, if they, pit, if they choose Blitz, they choose it for simplicity, 
and it would be nice if you hide some of more of the magic under the scenes because i think in 99 percent of the cases everyone would want to do let's say not 99 let's say 70 or 80 everyone would do authentication the same way so it's still bugging me that people i get it from a philosophical standpoint oh. blah 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 but it's still like it's email and password yeah. it's fucking Oh, it makes me yeah, pissed. I mean, we, it, it's still like, this isn't set in stone, um, but this authenticate user function, the most of it in here, yeah, this is basically something you want in your app because it's where you're making the database call to DB user, find one by email. Like maybe you don't wanna, maybe you need to, to add um, some other check in there, like, and then you're, yeah. So it's, I mean, it's not very much code, yeah. And you have full control over it. So that's that's at least a good starting point. Later, if we need, we can abstract some of it. That makes sense. All right. Let's go back to the sign up. We get the hash password. It's coming from the generated things. In user, we just have a basic Prisma stuff. Um, and then we have ctx.session.create. So what is the yeah. session context? What is this? So oh, that's this an is, internal thing. Um, yeah. So that's the Blitz build and session management. It's a global middleware so it runs for all your queries and mutations um and that middleware is defined in your blitz config file so that you can like you have full control over that mm -hmm. and so it's set on that context object and then you can do the user id the roles like if somebody's logged in and then you have those various functions to authorize is authorized create a session which is basically the login and then you can also revoke which is like log out and then okay. you also are able to set uh, private data that's only in your database, and then also public data that's available on the front end. Mm -hmm. All right. So we have the crea creation of the se session, then we return a user. And the, actually, then we return the... Huh. We, we just return the user. We don't return a token or something else regarding the right. session, right? Yeah, that's all of the, the tokens, cookies, et cetera, is taken care of for you behind the scenes. Love it. All right, so the user is gonna sign up, then the user is going to log in. And in login, we are parsing the validation form. That's great. This sort uh, first question before I move on to the rest of it. Is this uh, validation logic from ZUP or ZOD or whatever reused for also validating the actual form in the yeah, final form? Go try form? it. Go try no, it. No, I mean here, where, where is yeah, it yeah, used? Yeah, it is. Schema. Um, on this schema? schema? Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. So final so like if you form go over actually to, to the the app and try it. You'll like go to sign up. I already forgot my password because I'm an idiot. Uh, Brandon gmail.com. I love unicorns. Guess it. Cool. So that works. Uh, um, but yeah, if you, yeah. So it, no, it I just wanted to ask if input. React Final Form has native support for Zod. Um, it doesn't have native support, but uh, it's. If you go to the, the form component, you can ah, see it's like it's, Yeah, it's, I forgot this form component is your yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So schema. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, it's doing... It's very yeah. straightforward. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can even extract this into... Yeah, okay. Um, all right, so it's great that you're reusing it both for... I love that because it's super easy to reuse totally. the, the same thing on the back end for the mutation and on the client. Exactly. If, yeah, that's awesome. Uh, okay, so then we have authenticate user. Did we go over this one? We go, went over it a little bit. Um, okay, yada, 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 whatever, session create. So would you say that most of the users wouldn't mess with most of these things in auth? Like I would just store a bunch of different things in sign up, but that was because I want to like, but other than that, I wouldn't mess with a lot of authentication logic. Probably not. Yeah. What would you say something that's missing and the user would have to throw on top, except adding extra fields like, I don't know. Probably in the sign up, you would put like, I don't know, name, location, and a couple of other fields, but you would just store them, change your schema, and that's it. Right. What else would yeah. you want to add down the line? Um, so, what's missing is password reset and email confirmation. Um, okay. But we're gonna, I'm going to add that. So, you'll get that too by default. That's awesome. Um, are you planning? What, what is your plan regarding emails? Because emails are like crucial in an app do are you planning to support um, multiple like su support for multiple different providers or what is the idea the yeah the recommendation is to use any third party um api provider instead of doing like stmp or whatever yeah yeah it's yeah. better just to make an api yeah. call and, and use like templates to find in postmark or whatever yeah mm -hmm. so there's yeah 
it'll be what you, what you get out of the box by default. It won't actually send an email, but it'll have like a place for you to plug in your um, yeah your email library or whatever. Would people be able to eventually write like plugins on top of? I don't know if it's too early to talk about recipes. Do you want to? Con I, I think we can talk about because immediately when you no, say like it's gonna be possible to support X, like let's say that's Mailgun, I would be like, can you make it as easy as a writing a command? Just add Mailgun, putting putting yeah. my yeah. Mailgun token and get it over with. That would be ideal. Yep, totally. We can we can talk about recipes a bit later. Anything else that you want to touch? I thought we we're gonna write a bunch of authentication code, but basically everything that I wanted to write, it's already written here. How do you yeah. access the user in pages and components? That would be one thing. Um, so I guess um, so go to just go to the login. Oh, in the components, um, uh, pages index. Pages, login, and down toward the bottom. Oh, index. Wait, wait a second. So I have auth, components, layouts, pay. Oh, wait. Didn't I see another pages? Yeah, I see auth pages. Yeah. Login and sign. Yeah, up. so you can have multiple pages folders. Uh, okay. All right. Uh, the file is just for a pleasant getting started page for a new app. You can delete everything in here and start from scratch if you like. Okay. Um, let's so that to... there's a use session hook. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, cool. So that's all the magic. That love Blitz it. provides. And there. Love yep. it. And then there if I want to get the user name, would I have to query it differently or is everything on session? Yeah. User, so maybe? Um, every, what the data that's available in session here is if you go to login, go to the login mutation. Mutation, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the login mutation. Okay, so session dot create. Yeah. Um, and so that's passed an object. So everything in object that's called the public data object, and everything that you pass set as public data will be available on that session object in the front end. So if so I you want the to, name there. can I put the user like the entire user object that's created in the session and then use it in the session? I, yeah, I think or that should work. Because yeah. if I don't. How can I get individual things for this specific user? Um, so you would, you probably want to create like a use current user hook. Okay. I or, totally or, forgot how or, or we mutation. do that. Let's do that. Let's so not put it on the session and let's try to get whatever this user can have. Let's try to get his user yeah. inf information. Where would I put that yeah. query? First of all, DB? No. Um, so make a, do you want to, Write it from scratch, or you want to generate it? I want to. I'm lazy. I want to generate it. You can write. You can write blitz on uh, the terminal. Blitz generate query. Query. And then call like. Um, you're using alpha user. software. If you have any problems, expected query. To you have be to. One. You have to add a name. Uh, like use current or get current user probably. Use current user. It sounds like we're scamming get, the get, user. So let's say get current get, user. Get current user. Okay. Uh, expected query to be one of all crud model oh, mutations pages. The queries. Queries, huh? Uh uh sorry, we don't have a query um generator. Just write uh instead of get, get current user, write queries and then user. We don't have a uh, a single query generator yet. I thought we did. We need to get that. Oh okay, so I need to do queries so do and queries. then user user yeah and then it'll generate okay this will give me queries that get user or uh, id where the fuck did okay in users get user uh only available if a model region exists blah 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 okay so okay this is gonna give me everything that i want i still have to do like i think after because now you have when is when do you plan to release this authentication that's not in canary i mean when you're gonna use um Publish this in stable. Come on, kids, say the sentence. Probably, probably in a couple weeks. Couple weeks. Once I get the the form selector finished, mm -hmm. and I'm going on vacation this for the next week, so. All right. I would have to see what are the downsides because immediately when I think that we're returning the entire user here, I'm like, what if? Are there any? Would you ever want to limit what fields come from here or do nothing can happen? Because uh, when I'm building yeah, a graph backend, I always want to limit what do I, like I don't want the user password to yeah. be returned here, right? Right. But then so you would- what you would do is, 
you would so in the prisma call call select oh you, we you can, can do that or you can do select we, uh, uh, how was in, uh, inside okay, that object uh, but do they have omit in prisma they don't so if i want to get everything except the password the, the better idea would be to get the password and the rest of the user good, right yeah and just return yeah. the rest of yeah. the user here and, and password is password. not uh, password does not exist or oh, hash password all right i'm sorry it's fine uh okay yeah. and now how do i use that instead of passing the user id here let's try to get that thing um so import that query what was it called i like webstorm to import it for me because it's 2020 and if webstorm doesn't import it for me i'm going to fucking flip get use yes that's what i'm talking about that's how it should be vs code users are like whoa your okay, you editor also, can help uh, i like how you interrupted me You're like fuck off kids and the webstorm shit <laughs> You also need the okay. uh, use query hook. Huh? The, sorry. Um, const user equals use query. Ah, coming from Blitz. And yeah, then, and get then you, user. the first argument to that is um, get user. Okay. And this. Will and be then, me. second argument is going to be um, an object. Yeah. Which has and then where? In, and and what? Where, oh, where. So that's what yeah that, that's yeah, what's yeah, defined in yeah the, yeah yeah where id equals session, session. Dot user id uh, dot user id or we can take all of this and just move it into a function we can call it use current user and it sounds bad yeah. but we don't give a fuck so use current user will just return this and basically we would have to return this and get the session in here right and i'll be able to do use use current user and this will give me the user except this id uh is not assignable to type number and undefined huh um because it's saying okay so you current user id may not be there so first check if session dot user id is is empty and um, if it is return so if session dot user id is empty we return null oh yeah whatever you want okay that's also not going to work um we already got ourselves into trouble user id could be string uh, you, number you, you and need null. To do not. Uh, we just need it's, to do s string here and this is gonna be fine right yeah. typescript no it's yeah. so not and, and you need to uh, check in the if condition you need to, to add an exclamation point you're checking if it does oh, yeah, exist yeah that that's not yeah. a smart idea yeah. but i still think that the error that this is trying to tell us is that user id can be string number or null and user id yeah, here can only be string. we need to make that a little bit nicer like a way yeah. to define yeah, um, just, just make this hook built in because I don't want to do this basically in myself. Uh, and this is annoying. E, can we do TS ignore or S any or whatever the f Oh, okay, S any. I'm a TypeScript expert if you didn't know. So I got it's, this. Oh, don't it's stress. number. Your default is number, not string. Huh? The default user IDs are numbers. Okay, so we can do S number. TypeScript that's that's expert, what's in right your here. Prisma schema. Yep. Cool. So get user is coming from queries, but is it the default export? Yes, it is. Then why the fuck? This should work, right? It yeah. says render more. Ah, okay. This is just complaining because it's, yeah, cool. Uh, render more hooks during the previous. Oh, I would have to. Fuck me. I would have to. We have to. We cannot make the hook conditional, basically. So I think that should be fine because this should just return null if we don't have anything there. Let me refresh and it should be fine. React component suspended while rendering. Oh, yeah, because this is using a query, right? So, how do I handle this shit? Because we use use query. Um, and this is suspending. This is a... Suspended and no fallback. Bu, 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 oh, bu, because bu. It's, it's... Yeah, it's because it's loading. Um, yeah. So, you add a import suspense from React. It's a, it's a component. Okay. Um, Isn't there a way around that so I don't have to do that? There's no way around it, right? Now I yeah. have to do the fucking session, user ID and everything. Well, actually, I'm going to put it... Where do I put it? That's the question. Do we put it here? Fallback equals um, loading dot dot dot. It's going to have to be... Higher than it's gonna be this, right? Let's see. So when use current you want it to be inside use current user i think right so you would just want to be able to call current use current user and check if it's null or not okay. well let's see 
um, this is what I want. Where do you want to show the... Um, instead of doing session.user ID, I would like to be like, if there's a session user, no, I want to be here. If um, there's a user, basically, I would want to say, this is user.name and user role is going to be user. Does he have a role or something? Wait. Yeah, user.role. Let me go into the login. Roles. Is user dot role okay so role exists so user dot role i want to show these things and i want to keep this as simple as possible uh it seems like that's not possible because this is using a query yeah uh, it needs to have a loading um, we can move it into a component somewhere inside of this yeah. basically we can call so this i think what like you want you want to move the it's user fine. info component i got this we can just make a user info component and move all of this shit. I hate using ternaries in JSX. They're the worst thing ever. But you've used one here, so it's all good. Let me just fix my prettier import because when I cannot prettify files, it's getting pretty annoying. And WebStorm doesn't remember it and it's also annoying. But okay, now it's fine. So now I'm going to move that use, use uh, the worst name for a hook ever. And I would love to move this use query thing, use current user, whatever, into... Where would you move this? Into auth? I guess so. Let's call it use auth. I think that's a nicer name. Use auth. And let's just say export const use uh, auth. And that's going to return... How do I tell this? This is going to return a user type from Prism. You don't, it already knows. It already knows. Yeah. I don't believe you. But let's see if it knows or not. <laughs> use auth is going to be here. Does it know that this can get user? It doesn't. See? It doesn't know shit. It's like, ah, wait, user dot. Wait, wait. No bueno. Doesn't okay. work. Go back, go back to the hook. We can do user here, basically, and return it, but it's the same shit. So if I type it here, I guess. Wait, this should What be. is the, uh... yeah, it should. It should. W what's the type of user? What's the type of user? Uh, we are in get user. The, the return. Yeah, right. Wait, did I the, write the this? Yes, I did. Uh, record any, any. No, that's the context. There's no return here. There's no return type from what I can You see. don't define the return. It, it should down at rest. Uh, what is the type of rest? Wait, but let's see if it's smart enough. If we return the user, it should be fine, right? Let's do user dot. Nope. I'm just returning the user as it's coming from Prisma. So here it should know the file. Yeah, here it knows the thing. But when I return it here, it doesn't know the thing. I don't like that. Uh, how what how is your use query type? Use query. Extends query offend. It, it is type pro is type correctly. Yeah. Um maybe maybe restart your TypeScript uh server. TypeScript service. I don't know how to do that. Restart TypeScript service. Language Restarting, service, yeah. yes. User dot so it doesn't work it should be able to. Anyway, can we not sweat this? Just figure out. Oh, suspense. oh. yeah. Uh, use query returns a tuple. Mm, yeah, that makes sense. Yep. Okay. So alrighty. Can uh, well yep. in this tuple do I get loading? Is loading? And if I want, I can handle this with a. Um, no, I can't. Okay, never mind. Never mind. Let's just handle it with suspense. suspense. Yeah. It's all good. Yep. Um, so where do I use user info? User info. Where are you? Uh, I'm not using it yet, so I can get rid of all of this shit. And we can just use wherever you have put that user info. We can use it here. Should be imported properly. And I'm just going to wrap that fucker with suspense. I don't have to wrap everything with suspense. Let's say fallback is div whatever. No, that's not a good fallback. I think a better fallback if it says loading, not whatever. Suspense import from module react. Thank you, WebStorm. Thank you. Invalid prisma.user.find one invocation in webpack internal where ID is null. Ah, because ID might be null. And oh, wait, where's that? Uh, that's so a user use... here, right? Yeah, you could check there. You could, or um, here if. Um... Let's try this. Okay, so there, there's a second object to. Where? Yeah, where? That, that's not, that's a rule of hook. You're gonna validate and validate yeah, the rule yeah, of hook. Yeah, I forgot that already. Pass a that. third. Pass the third parameter to use query. Yeah. Um, that can I say object. suspense false? And no, uh, in, well, you can, but enabled. enabled. There's an enabled yeah. option. 
enabled and then say if ah. user or so if this is a conditional user way of making a yeah. uh, this is a weird yeah. way of making this hook conditional love yeah. it okay I user id is nothing user the role is user because in user i have username and i don't think i don't think that's a thing but user id should be fine love it user yeah. dot Okay, Brandon, now it's time to stop the stream and you go and build this hook in because you don't want yeah. your users to figure this shit. This should be generated. I think so. What do I yes. know? I'm a moron. Yeah. yeah, you're you're right. I will do that. Yeah, you're like, yep, yep. You're a moron. I can confirm. Um, Let's see if okay, people have so, some questions or something. Uh, one thing about this mm -hmm. use query hook is we're using, like, th this is a perfectly valid way to do it. Another way is to read the, the user session on the server. We're here, we're reading the session on the client and sending it down to the server. You can also yeah. just get the ID on the server. So two different ways to do it. Okay, but if it's achieving the same thing, I think we can talk about other things because we yeah. have 50 minutes left on the stream and we want to talk about as much as possible. I love the simplicity of this. And it's still in Canary, it's new. And the more you work on it, the more things you're going to add. So that makes me happy um let me see if people have any do you have chat hello wherever you're watching do you have any questions um regarding what you've seen so far uh, pa -pa 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 -pum. what about the real-time stuff collaborative text editor the kind of thing you'd use web sockets for that's a good question give me a short answer brandon um because uh serverless is one of our primary deployment targets we 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 don't have web sockets built in um, but you can, the use query hook has polling, so you can just add a, um, that's not a, a solution for real time stuff. So give uh, us a real, depending answer. on what your use case <laughs> it is, it, it can be, um, My use so case the other is way chat. is to, um, you want to build chat yourself or are you using, or you're, or are you using a third Let's just service? imagine that for some fucking reason, I want to reinvent chat in 2020. No, like whatever needs web sockets. What is your long-term plan? I get it that it's not built in and, um, Polling, polling is one. We're, of the, we're uh, adding support for a custom server, which would allow you to have web sockets, but you can't deploy a serverless. So, yeah. do you, if you want, like you can do that. That's a that's approach. Or if you want serverless, then you need to spin up your own separate server, that a web socket server. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right. Um, Somebody said in the chat so, that they yeah, like. I haven't that thought a lot about that. Exposed. So place. they like that this is not hidden behind the scenes. I don't like it. They like it. So. That's fine. Uh, if there will be a confirmation email sent on registration, could it somehow be queued? I don't think that's a, yeah, a concern of, of Blitz. It's just a... It, it could be. We're, we're going to be adding um, like support for background queues. Like not built into Blitz, but like real nice adapters for using the queues. Okay. All right. Um, I don't know if I want to ask anything else regarding the, let me just go back to the screen. We can see, cause I would really want to talk about recipes next, but is What's there the anything stall? else that Chakra. you want to No, I wanted to see, um, where's, where are your authentication docs? Is that, where do I find that thing? Um, just go to docs, auth on the second session, sec section. Um, the only thing we haven't really talked about is scroll down to third party i haven't seen how the scheme of prisma looks like mm. you need this okay how about before we go to passport and stuff how about like in um i'm using um nexus for building graphql backends and nexus plays along nicely with graphql shield and i love the way you can express like um these rules in graphql shield let me just show for the people who haven't seen them. I know that you have seen them probably. Uh, if I can find a nice, neat example. Yeah, this for one. Like, for like, for authorization show, for roles. No, I wanted to show this one. And then you, defi you define your rules. It's authenticated, it's admin, blah, blah, blah. And then basically for you're working with this file. And you say like, people can query the fruits if they're authenticated or they're admin or editor. Is there a need for some? Well, of course there's a need, but how would you manage it in Blitz? Do you have any plans? Yeah, so right now the way to do it is go to go to your get user query. And okay. the first line, yeah, add a new line at the top and do um, 
So your, your context isn't typed yet. So maybe you want to go over to login and copy the, the um, type definition for context. Copy the whole, yeah. Yeah. Yep. So now okay. do a context or CTX dot session and then um, authorize is a function. Okay. And pass it an array or, well, okay. So let's say, um, all right. So just that call right there without any arguments is going to ensure that a user is logged in. If cool. not, it's going That's to throw awesome. an authentication error. Okay. And, and now... then you can pass a role or roles to ah. ensure that they have a certain role. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, like this, it'll throw... admin manager and so on. Yep. Okay. I like that. Yep. Um, but it's still not as, um, I like that here you can have like one generic overview of how your entire app is protected. And here you would have to do it basically per, I mean, you could make some object type API. I mean, the user, me, yeah. can express myself in an object API and here I can just read it. And granted, I would have to go and read it, but would there be... I, so, I, I think in general, it's better to have it right here in line with, with your function so that when you're working here, like you can see like exactly what role it's gonna be if you don't have to go to another file. Um, the solution that we can do to keep this approach, but also see a global um, like summary is a CLI command to generate, to like, it can read through all your code and figure out all the roles and say like, here, this query can, user can, uh, has to be logged in with this role. The nice thing about this is when you look at it this way, you're like, oh yeah, you're writing them anyway. But you can also put asterisk and be like, all of my queries could be accessed by admin and only these specific queries can be like this. Yeah. This thing. So, uh, but, but anyway, you've built... So the other thing, we could add middleware. You could add global middleware yeah. that would basically do that sort of thing. Okay. So it's really, it's possibilities are limitless, like whatever this, people want to do. Right? So somebody can build their own something like GraphQL Shield with the session middleware, yeah. I guess. Yeah. Unstable is authorized. I hate this James Bond song that's running in the background. You cannot hear it, but you sound like a James Bond villain when you're talking. Um, session on the server. I would, I can't do, like as soon as this is stable, I'm gonna try to write an app on it and it's probably gonna be on stream and it would be good if you can hop on the stream and guide me and help me. But we're not going to do this kind of talking session. I'm just going to do one of my coding streams. Sure. Um, okay, it's great that you... Jesus Christ, we already worked on a lot of things regarding authentication. It's not some half ass attempt to... I, I love that. Let's just see. We're not going to write it. Let's just see how Passport is uh, integrated. I love that you already have that. Anything that you want to tell me regarding the Passport middleware and stuff? Um, no, so you, you just add one um, API route. Mm-hmm. So, and then the, it's it's under like auth slash dot 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 auth a spread. And then you pass your success redirect URL, error re redirect URL. And then, yeah, as you can see there in the docs, you pass mm -hmm. in password strategy. Mm -hmm. So all of that code mm -hmm. is basically um, from the Twitter strategy docs. Mm -hmm. And then it uses pass, uh, Prisma inside of that to create or update the user after you log in. And then you return that public data object from that and then Blitz will automatically create the session and redirect you back to wherever you want to go. Love it. Love it. I don't have anything else to ask. I've yet to use this. Maybe after I use it and I start working on an app for a while, maybe the questions will start to pop up because I'm too used to the GraphQL on the backend and GraphQL on the client. And this seems like it's way better, but I, I think it might have some things that are maybe caching on the client side and caching validation and blah, blah, blah. But that has nothing to do with what we're talking That's about all today. Build in with React Query. Yeah, I, I've, I'm following the progress of React Query. And I saw what's going on with Apollo 3 on the client side. And I have yet to play both with React Query and Blitz and see Apollo 3, how it handles caching, because that's the biggest nightmare on the client. Um, but we, we can talk about that at some point whenever I try it and then I have a bunch of questions regarding that. Now it's just going to be a bunch of guesswork. Um, okay. We can talk about error handling. Error handling, yeah. So Let's over the get user um, thing you, you mean have over on the... error handling in general for Blitz? or yeah, error in general. In general, okay. Um, so you're the, over on the, in your code editor, 
Name my code. You can see that if user isn't there, we throw a, a not found error. Yeah, and that's called by okay. the error boundary in the app layout. Yeah, and so what you what's this that error is on the server, but it propagates to the front end and is handled by this error boundary component. Yeah, which like if an API, you would have to check and say if the error is yeah. the error, then like rethrow the error or whatever. But you just throw it on the server, okay. and then you can catch it in your error boundary. Mm -hmm. And, and basically, so the authorization does the same thing. Okay. So when you call that authorized call, if you're not logged in, it'll throw an authorization error. Yeah, yeah, yeah here. This is going to throw new authentication yep. error. And this is basically just name, status code, and so on. If I wanted to implement a custom name here and then on the client to display something custom, it would be as easy as checking in the app for the error name, right? Correct. And then I can yep. ch check if there is something, just render something else. Okay, I love this. Super simple. Love simple stuff. I love when you don't write a lot of code, but you get shit ton of functionality. Exactly. Um, I just hope that a lot of the developers will, real will realize that all of us are reinventing the same shit all over again. And I'm pretty sure that most developers would look at Blitz and be like, um, this is too opinionated. And in our company, we actually have seven micro front ends talking to like eight different uh, stacks of serverless. And I'm going to fall asleep, go for a nap and be like, you're reinventing the same shit for the billionth time. And then there's going to be the other developers or th that are going to be like, cool. This handles all of the things. I love it. Um, did we talk about the routing the, the last time? Is this just using the next router under the hood? Yeah. Love it. We have a, a couple hooks that are convenient hooks. Like uh, we have use params and use param that yeah. allows you to find the type. And so the return is properly typed instead of string or string array or undefined. And it can also be a number, parse a number for you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Man, there's so much, like last time we visited this, it was way, like I I have to print this and basically read it before I go to sleep. There's way too much shit going on. Uh, I'm gonna Most do Most of a... the docs in here are like copied straight from Next.js. Oh, you ruin, you, you keep that for after the stream. Be like, it's a don't worry. This is just Next.js <laughs> with a little, you ruin the magic for the people now. But anyway, I'm gonna do a stream soon. Uh, on as soon as I'm done with building that, I don't know if you watch my streams, uh, but for people who are, I've, I've, I'm building a landing page component of, uh, library for React using Chakra UI. As soon as I'm done with that, I want to build something with Blitz as soon as that's, that's live. And for people who are watching on YouTube, Periscope and so on, for the love of everything, if you want to watch that stream, transfer to Twitch because I'm going to keep streaming on Twitch. I'm going to stop streaming on the other services. I'm pasting the link again. All right, uh, we have around 35 minutes left. Let's see the recipes. I saw the recipes. Are they in Canary or are they in Yeah, they're stable. They're stable. They're stable. Awesome. Yeah. Where can I find them? Recipes. Um, there's it's... only, we only have, there's the docs, uh, but we only have three right now. We have. Doesn't matter. Heroin, I'm interested in the philosophy behind them, not in the amount of them that you have. Let me just read. You've taken inspiration from Gatsby recipes and are very appreciative of the help in the A. So did you go the Gatsby route or what did you change and why um, you didn't? It's basically the same. Um, currently, our recipes are written in plain uh, TypeScript instead of MDX. I actually like, like that more. Gatsby to be recipes? Honest. Yeah, I like that more. I um, like that more. Yeah, so we, we potentially will add support for MDX too. We'll see. Okay. I thought when Gatsby released the recipes, I thought that finally everyone's going to get on the same page and all of us are going to use it. But I'm like, wait, this is web development. We love to reinvent shit. Of course, nobody's going to use the same recipes. Everyone's going to reinvent recipes. And But if Next.js ever comes with their, I don't know if they did or they're planning to, are you going to jump over and just use their things? Are they planning to use yes. plugins and recipes and stuff like that? I don't know. Um, I've never heard any talk about recipes. There's... An RFC for plugins. Yeah. Um, but I don't know like if or when that's coming. Uh -huh. Plugins discussion probably is from 2017. Let me guess, 2016, 292. Okay, oh, GitHub, don't be fucking hipsters. Tell me the actual date because I'm dumb. I cannot calculate this shit. <laughs> but and, anyway, this is just a discussion. Probably you're in this discussion seven days ago. Uh, here's a blog post we wrote about how we're using plugins today. How? When they're not live. It's they wrote their own 
Oh, okay. Like plugin type Sharing of code in Next.js applications with plugins. As I said, every company, every framework, everyone's going to reinvent and we have to get on the same page. Let's see how did you solve it. I want to see a code. I don't want to see... Actually, let's see this quickly, but I'm more in, in, interested in the code. So Blitz install Tailwind. If I do this, let's do this. Blitz install You can Tailwind. install Chakra instead of yeah. you want. Awesome. Just Chakra? Blitz install Chakra? Yeah. Yep. I love that. Let's see how it is. Uh, I, I'm not concerned what this can do. I get it. And I've written some similar code when I wanted to. I think I mentioned this before. Like in, I'm going to show it again. So press enter. Um, press enter it's to a, begin the recipe. It's a bit of a rough experience right now. You have to keep pressing enter a bunch of times, but <laughs> eventually it. No, it's all. fine. Um, these are the things, like this is the things that I've built for JSUI. If you haven't seen JSUI, I don't know if I'm ever going to update it, but I'm going to paste the link here if you want to check it out. Uh, most of the features will be built into CZ. But anyway, I had these things like plugins have the ability to install new dependencies, remove dependencies, modify scripts, remove and add new files to a project. And I had plugins for Storybook, blah, 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 blah. The number one thing that was a concern, and I don't know how did you solve it, is um, all the plugins that I wrote um, work only in an ideal scenario. What if the user's code and directories and shit were modified by a plugin already? Do you have any strategy how different plugins are going to conflict and work together? Because I know that I could install Chakra, but what happens yeah. if I want to install Storybook and Storybook to work with Chakra and then a few more layers? Is that going to be... Do you have a plan or are you handling it already? Um, yeah, like we haven't really got to a lot of that, but... Um, I think that's the trickiest part we'll just recipes have to, and yeah, plugins. Yeah, yeah. If there's things with a lot of interdependencies, then yeah, it might be tricky. And then you probably want a recipe for both install like the but even the if you install the recipes but... for both like storybook might not understand that you are using whatever or just might not understand yeah. that you're using whatever and that's the trickiest part to solve and i hope that you're going to solve it one day but let's see enter to begin recipe okay are we going to cook is this list if this list good looks good press enter to install i don't know if people can see this yeah yeah chakra sure. ui core emotion core emotion style emotion theming so basically it's going to add a bunch of things and it's going to do what else that's it just dependencies it, install dependencies oh. and then install your theme provider can you skip the steps and just click enter and just do everything or would i have to wait for this and then do the next uh, thing and yeah next we thing? need to do yeah we need to add that right now it's like yeah too many steps yeah Dependencies is all press enter to continue. Next, put some salt and pepper. Uh, we can import the chakra provider into app so it's accessible. So, mm -hmm, interesting. Okay. I'm wondering how, like if things so we, were we moved a little bit. We actually parse the, the AST. Yeah, I wanted to ask that. That's fucking there, cool. Yeah. You don't just yeah. hard code it, put it on line seven and right. 19, right? Yeah. <laughs> I like that. Files changes applied. Press enter to continue. The recipe for Chakra compiles successfully. Its functionality is now fully configured in your no fucking way that this works. I'm going to go in Ad user Adam info. Markon, who is watching, is the genius behind this. Hmm? Adam Markon is a Blitz contributor. He's, a, he's the one oh, that like, implemented all, right. all of this recipe. Shout, stuff, out. So. Shout out to Shout him. Out to Shout him. out to Adam. Yeah. Uh, there he is in the chat. Um, let's see. So what can I do now is I can change this button for a chakra button, I guess. Right? Yeah. Come on, man. Button is coming from chakra core. And if that works, this is... Okay, that's it. That's the end of the stream. This is the future <laughs> of web development, for fuck's sake. Are you kidding me? This is how... What I love about this, why I'm so excited, this is how things should work. There shouldn't exactly. be a person in the company who spends five hours and when the manager what did you work on today well i was trying to configure gatsby to work with chakra that should be four seconds that's it love it fucking love it awesome what else could i install that's you have chakra you have tailwind you have and we have a render so if you let's install render we'll add the Ooh. render config oh that's awesome i haven't thought of that so if you don't know render.com is a it, like it's basically the service that I switched to for hosting all of my apps. Um, and you should definitely check it out. Uh, not uh, affiliated with them or whatever, just I'm gonna endorse them as much as possible until more people in the community give them a chance. So basically, um, so I'm interested in this actually, fuck it. Um, how do, what was the blitz Let's install render? Install render. And this will prepare basically this thing to be deployable using 
um, including the database and everything else, right? Correct. So if you go set up a rest awesome. GitHub repo and push it to the repo, then you can go to render, connect it, and it'll deploy exactly what you have now. Fucking sweet. Enter. To, this is the future. This is how it should be. This is how it should be. And all of you hipsters who disagree with me and want to keep doing low level things, fuck off. Seriously, we shouldn't. This is how it should be. On one hand, I'm happy. On the other hand, I'm pissed at so many people that are going to come in your repo and be like, uh, well, actually, uh, what about supporting nine different micro front ends? And we think that your boilerplate is not blah, 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 blah. So far, we haven't had too many of those. Uh, the, yeah. the good thing is uh, we have Redwood as an alternative for people who like who don't agree with Blitz. They can go use Redwood. But no, people who don't agree with Blitz are also not going to agree with Redwood. And they're going to be like... Forever, I'm going to query uh, vanilla SQL, raw SQL. Uh, you shouldn't use an ORM and you shouldn't use this. And I'm going to... Uh, and they're making me fall asleep. Anyway, how to install a recipe. We saw that. I just want to see a folder with the source for a recipe. Uh, the full... Okay, go, back to, go back to... Um, yeah. Yeah. Let's see Chakra, for example. So you put an index.ts. Yeah. And yeah. this is the AST thing. That's a bit... Um, it would be awesome if you can add... Um, We're going to add a, a convenient function for adding top-level providers. Yeah. That's a common thing. Yeah. You mean this um, thing, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. To, to yeah. be able to stack providers and yeah. just manage yeah. providers. That would be awesome. Yeah. Um, so then down here is Or the maybe a builder. bit... Um, sorry, a bit more higher level than AST. So people who don't know what the fuck this means, maybe just, you know, some yeah, so, abstraction so scroll on top down. of this. Yeah. Like, so this builder, so we have a number of things. So you have set name, set description, add dependency step. So those are the, the high oh, level Zico, like, things. Uh, did Z, does Zico work on Blitz? He mentioned. Is he in the yeah, stream? Yeah, he, Zico, he where are you at? He started that, but I guess he's not watching the stream. Um, um, and then, yeah, so we can add a uh, top level provider, st like builder function in here. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Set repo link, set owner, dependency step, packages. Can you modify packages or something? Can you add scripts? Um, you can add files. So if you go over to the tail end. Can I add a, oh, um, a script in package.json? Um, oh. For, Haven't thought of you that. Could, you, could, you could write the AST for it. But yeah, that's no, a good, Not the AST. That's a that would uh, be a good... Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> for adding, removing scripts and stuff like that. Transform yeah. file step. Blah, blah, blah. Cool. Um, all right, this is awesome. I and actually, I prefer that this is written in um, JavaScript because I think Gatsby and MDX is way too limiting, so people are not going to be able to properly express themselves with writing recipes. It, you would still be able to do the same stuff, but yeah, you have yeah. to write your own custom yeah, component. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, okay, Jesus, we have 30 minutes left because Blitz is way too easy and. <laughs> <laughs> anything like I think we saw most of the things in authentication most of the things in recipes um, well we can actually cut it short like we don't have to make the longest stream on earth because later we're gonna have the recording and people would want to watch the recording and usually when I see a recording that's like two hours I'm like oh fuck off what who are you Tarantino and I'm gonna watch a two-hour stream no so when they see a one-hour stream they might be interested in, in watching it so maybe um, if we don't have uh, somebody asked, can you blitz install this and blitz install that? You cannot send links, so you cannot blitz install this and blitz install that. Uh, I don't think that we got a lot of questions. So now is the time for questions. Come on, we're going to try to answer some questions here. Uh, hey, Zico. Zico is here, the legend behind the recipes. Would be cool to see more complex reusable validation examples, like an input is required when another input is present. That's just a super specific uh, thing that doesn't have anything to do with the philosophy behind Blitz. So we're not going to answer that, but we're going to do that in my stream. So if you want to watch that, you might want to follow the channel. We're going to do it in the stream soon. Anything else? Would want to see the render deploy process? We're also not going to do that because I have a couple of things in render that I cannot show you yet and I cannot log in. But that's super easy and you can check it out. You can check out render at render.com. It's super easy. What else? I'm interested in talking something regarding the philosophy on Blitz. What do you think? Okay, for the stubborn people in the chat, for the stubborn people in the chat uh, who are not convinced, what is the one thing that you would want to see in Blitz that would make you feel like, okay, now I'm going to start using this if they add one. Maybe we can give Brandon some help and direction for like what is missing and stuff. 
Um, is there any doc section with the server requirements? Musha asks. Brandon? Um, any... It's serverless by the default, server right? Um, I guess you're talking about like, does it need to be Linux or whatever? Mm -hmm. um, so it's just um, anywhere you can like run an express app, you can run this. Mm -hmm. um, Perfect. Integrations folder is still present. Be in... on your app. Sorry. Um, by the way, there's a delay. I don't want to talk over Brandon, but we're using Zoom and there's a bit of a delay and I seem like an asshole and I talk over him. I'm not an asshole. You know that, right? Uh, what did you say? Sorry, once again, I'm going to shut up. Um, I just said that it, like there's no memory or CPU requirements. That's dependent mm -hmm. on your app and what you're doing. All right. Um, Osters Klide asks, I see the integrations folder. The, yeah. Can you move the chat? Uh, yes. it's right now it's covered over the yeah yeah we can actually move to this uh to this thing and but as i said don't answer all the questions we're gonna pick a couple of things um integrations folder is still present in new projects what are your plans for this what is the integrations folder i haven't seen an oh i've seen the integrations folder and that's a good question um so it's just the best practice for a place to put integrations with any type of third party so like integration with your email provider integration with um, any third-party APIs, services, etc. Mm -hmm. um, DVJO2. We already answered that question. You can watch it in the live um, in the video later. Tafelito asks, "How would Blitz scale? We used to run Meteor before, and when the app started growing, it became a lot of a mess trying to scale." That's a good question. I think, from um, what I see, it can scale as a motherfucker. It's yeah, right. Yeah, like it's. It's set up just like Next, so it can scale just as much as Next and arguably even better than Next um, because of how you can have multiple pages folders. So you can organize pages like if you have multiple teams, you can have um, all your pages, all your components and everything that uh, a certain team is responsible for can be in like a certain folder in your architecture. And so they can like manage all the changes within that. All right. So it's pretty flexible. Cool. Um, I, why uh, does Blitz folder structure get overwhelming? Asks Chan Lito. I don't think so. Why would it get like the folder structure at the end of the day is you decide how much you want to nest it and how many folders and so on. Yeah. Um, yeah. Sandulat says the only question is why am I not a millionaire so that I can throw out all the money at Blitz? The, which I'm going to ask the actual question. Do you get any funding? Do you actually support? The team who's working currently, on it so far, do you have any plans like that? Currently, or? I have like $550 monthly sponsorship. Most nice. of it's from Fauna. Nice. So. That's great. And then occasional donations and things. Yeah. But yeah. yeah, super thankful for that. And anyone can sponsor um, Blitz on GitHub. You can have $5 per month up to $2,500 per month. That's so. awesome. That's awesome. As soon as I'm going to start using it, I'm going to sponsor you because I fucking love the philosophy and I love what you're doing with it. Um, somebody says, when it's serverless, where is the DB located? You deploy the DB to your service of choice. So when we added um, the plugin for render, basically you're adding a recipe. So the database is going to be deployed to render and then the serverless just connects to the database. You still have to host the database somewhere. And for connection to the database, you're using Prisma and Prisma is flexible, supports different types of databases. So that's not a concern of Blitz, basically, right? Correct. It uh, can be anywhere. Yeah, I think we have one hour, 15 minutes. Uh, Next.js team recently posted that Next.js wasn't designed to be a full API, but rather just to back up UIs. Does that have any impact on Blitz? That's the last question we're going to answer. I don't know if you've heard it, but you can. Um, if I, uh, so I don't think that's what they said. Maybe you can link me to that. Maybe I misunderstood. But the only thing I've seen is that Vercel is not for deploying full APIs. Yeah. But rather front end was some API helpers. Um, and I, I think that has zero impact on Next. They're like, Next is always, um, they're never gonna remove support for custom server yeah. or whatever. It's always like, it's just a node server, so. Hey, look, they said they're always gonna care about deployments and server stuff, but now Versal is all about the front end. And I had to migrate all of my servers. So you can never trust when someone says, oh, we're forever gonna do this and that. Especially well, someone yeah. who hasn't, I mean, you know, <laughs> done it in the past, so. 
Next is open source, so people we can always fork it and. Yeah, that's the difference. If, if they try to do something, yeah, 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 yeah. I actually agree. Um, okay, this this one is actually important. His company is using Firebase. Is there a plan for its integration? Which actually opens the questions. What are your plans for replacing Prisma and how? Because everything that you generate right now is pretty hard coded to Prisma. I guess there's no work on it so far. But what what are the plans there? Um. So. Current today, you you don't have to use Prisma. Like it comes in the files by default that we generate, but you can rip that out and use anything you want at Firebase. Uh, there's no special integration needed for that. Um, but we will add plugins. So all the Prisma specific stuff will be in a plugin, and that plugin probably will provide the templates. Um, and then so we, we're going to have a plugin for Fauna. We're going to have a plugin for for anything else. Type ORM if you want. It's up to you. All right, that's awesome. So, Brendan, it's been one hour and 15 minutes, and you've been telling us about your thing. Now, there's going to be literally one minute that I'm going to tell people that don't know about it, about CZ.co. If you haven't checked CZ.co, I'm not going to sweat it. You can check it, check it out at CZ.co. It's the browser for developers. We're busting our ass. Uh, we just released a new version. We released a new alpha today. We're releasing an alpha every day. If you join the CZ... Um, um, if you join the CZ Alpha channels or beta channels, you can join our Slack community where we can hang out and we can shape the future of development. That's what we're trying to do. I love the community that's shaping up on, on Slack. I don't know if you're using... Brandon, if you tell me right now that you're not using CZ for development, I'm never touching Blitz with a 10-foot pole and I'm going to talk only about Redwood from now on. Putting you on the spot. <laughs> well, actually, I, um, I, I like CZ. Firefox and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> I am an owner of Sizzy, but I have not used it because uh, I haven't done any heavy uh, UI development for a while. I'm doing mostly like... It's the, not about the UI development. Oh, anyway. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm just fucking around. You can check out Sizzy at Sizzy.co. For people who have seen this project two years ago when it was just a responsive thingy, it's not that anymore. So we still have that. And the main focus is on that. But it also acts like a normal browser with shit ton of things that a normal browser doesn't have. Basically, Firefox is free. That's a great point, Sean Lido, but CZ is useful. How about that? Um, anyway, you can check it out at CZ.co. Recently, we launched a lifetime plan, so you don't have to pay a subscription. You can actually use it. Um, you can only pay once. Anyway, not to sweat too much about it. Brendan, I'm going to put in your links here, twitter.com slash flybayer, right? Flybayer. Yes. Um, and you can check out Blitz at, fuck me, I cannot find the URL. It's blitzjs.org, I think. Or probably not. Blizzjazz.com. Blizzjazz.com. Paste the link here. Um, anything else that you want me to plug in the chat so people can click on it? I'm going to plug in my I'll stuff. So you can plug the link to... Uh, <laughs> did you do the, the repo? The repo. Absolutely plugging the repo. Say no more. Well, it's actually... And then there's the, a sponsor button at the top of the repo. Sponsor button at the top of the repo. We should have aligned this at the beginning of the stream, but we didn't. If you want to sponsor Blitz, you can sponsor it here. Um, I think that's it. I want to thank you very much for spending your time with me. We're gonna check. Uh, we're gonna chat a little bit after we press end stream. But thank you very much for being part of the stream. And I think people enjoyed it, and I enjoyed it, and I learned a lot. And I'm rooting for the future of Blitz. How do you want to sign out? Sign out. You do the sign out. Thanks, you all, for watching. Love you. Love to see you uh, as a contributor in the Blitz con community. Awesome. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching. I will see you in the next stream, which is probably going to be tomorrow. So make sure to follow at twitch.tv slash the Have a good day and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.